Hi guys, in this video I want to explain a little bit about the MIDI transform window, which you might have seen in Logic before. Um, we can find it either under the functions here, if we go to MIDI transform in the arrangement window, or we can find it in the MIDI editor if we go to MIDI transform here. And I'm guessing that uh, some of you might have used these presets before. Uh, these are basically actions that we can apply to the notes in a certain region. So for example, I have a melody right here. If I choose fixed velocity as a preset there, I can um, see the action that is being applied and we'll say if the status equals a note then fix the velocity to a value of 100. So if I, the first thing I can do is I can try to see uh, which events will be processed. If I hit select only it says um, that it's going to process uh, 24 MIDI events. This just selects the notes. It doesn't do anything else. It's just a way to see what you're actually editing. Um, you could also select a custom range so I could select just these notes here and then I can hit operate only in which case it's going to fix the velocity just of those selected notes to a value of 100 or if I undo that I can just do select and operate and it will apply this to everything that equals a note. So this is already a useful thing. If you haven't used this before, definitely check that out. And there are a couple handy um, actions in here. One that I use quite a lot is random velocity, which will randomize the velocity between a value of 40 and 127. We can check that out. We can see we get all different velocities. Usually I'll make this a little bit more subtle. To humanize, you would do something like this and then select and operate. Um, if we want to humanize even more, there's actually an action for that, which will not only randomize the velocity with a value of 10 more or less, it will also randomize the length with by 10 ticks. Ticks is a very small value and it will randomize the position. Um, but we can keep hitting that. You can see the more that you hit that action, the more your nodes will be randomized. Um, for now though, I'm gonna quantize that. Or actually, I'll just undo that. Um, so this is nice, and there, by looking at the examples, you can find uh, quite a lot of cool things. For now, let's um, let's fix the position here again. Or sorry, fix the velocity to a value of a hundred. Actually, let's go a little bit lower. Let's do something like this. All right, but what I want to check out today is actually how to use this to create our own actions. And to do that, we can go here and we say create a new transform set. And if we do that, it asks whether we want to rename the current set or create a new one. We are going to create a new one, um, at which point all of the options become available to us. Now, I should point out at this stage as well that these presets are being saved in the project. These are not global settings. So if you want to use these actions, you can see that I have a couple custom ones. If you want to use them, um, in all your projects you should set this in your template and then use that template for your um, to, to create your music basically so um, what we can do here let's first take a step back and see what's happening here so first we have um, the conditions and the conditions are what you want to process so this is this is basically an input filter you can say something like right now you can see that all of them are set to all which means that it's going to do everything basically and then below here we have the operations and everything is going to be passed through so with this setting nothing is going to happen but we could choose first a condition here we could say if the status equals and then we get some different types of messages we could say for example if the status equals a note um, but also notice that we can do this with control messages with pitch band messages with channel pressure uh, poly pressure which is a polyphonic aftertouch fader messages um, which are specific to logic and meta events. This is a cool thing. We're going to look at that a little bit later on. Um, but for now, let's say the status equals a note. And then if it, this bottom, this operation, um, if this is set to through, through, <laughs> through i cannot say that very well um there's not there's not happening anything but we could either fix this or choose a map set so we can fix this to be for example a control message um, and then we can uh, select and operate and now all the midi nodes become control messages and we can actually see that if we open the event list we can see that they're all set to some control message you can see that here as well and the nodes have disappeared um, so the thing that you actually want to do, you set that with these operation bytes right here. So for example, if we let the note through and we want to 
keep them nodes, we could um, alter some other aspect of the node. Like in this action with the status, we're actually changing the type of the event. So we can change um, automation to nodes or nodes to automation. It can be interesting. Um, but if we want to operate on the nodes, we want to send this through and we choose some other action. So now we can say, all right, pitch all. So look at all the pitches. Uh, as soon as it's a node, look at the pitch and then fix this to, for example, D sharp two, and then we hit select and operate, and all the nodes will move to D sharp two. Now I could also give this a. Um, I can also randomize this, for example. This would be interesting for hi hats, for example. Let's say you have a drum machine that uses hi hats in between F two and let's say C three, and now if we hit select and operate, it's going to randomize all the nodes within that range. So that's a rather cool thing. Um, we could also, if we let this through, we could alter the velocity. We could say, all right, um, let's use a map for that. For example, this map is interesting. It's gonna um, take a look at the at the current velocity and it's gonna map that based on this value. And this corresponds to the to the notes themselves and the range. So the middle one here would be C3 on your keyboard. And then it's gonna alter that. So we should probably be in around this range. So if we hit select and operate, you can see that all of them become a little bit uh, softer in volume. We can also make them louder. Um, we are, usually we have to choose map again if we do that. It's kind of a weird thing. Or we can max them out like so. The velocity will be maximum. So there's quite some cool things we can do, but. Um, I'll let you experiment with that and with the length and with the velocity and creating your own actions. Actually, one that we might try that's a little bit more complex is let's say we want to, let's set this all back to the default. Let's say all the nodes that are inside this region of 17 and 25. This is how we select the nodes just inside a certain region. So now it's, it will pay attention to these nodes. And then if the status equals a node, a pitch, what we can do is we can create perhaps a velocity crescendo. Um, let's see if we can do that if we go from 0 to 127. Now you can see that the velocity starts at the lowest point and then it becomes louder and louder. Let's listen to that. Right, you get the idea. Um, we could also from this, um, once we have this, we could also say that um, inside this position we can divide the position by a value of two and then hit select and operate and now you can see that the nodes become twice as fast one thing it didn't do though you can see that the nodes has become, have become twice as fast but it didn't change the length so if we want to change that as well we also need to say all right the length let's divide that by two as well I'll undo this and then I'll run this again. And now the nodes actually have become shorter as well. Um, this would be interesting as well if we if we want to go to weird time signature. We, one thing, for example, we can do is we can divide by 1.5 to fix everything to, um, what is this, <laughs> four and a half bars. Um, so there's cool stuff here. But one thing I want to show you, because, uh, mainly because I haven't seen this documented anywhere, I think, is um, meta events. So let's 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 do something fancy. Meta events are events that you, uh, logic uses to do specific things, um, but you can set them inside a MIDI region. One thing you could do, for example, is to uh, switch a screen set. For example, uh, this would be an interesting example of an action. So let's try that. What we'll do is we'll um, remove all the nodes except one. Let's keep this node. And then um, the position we're going to say all. We'll just say, and this one we're going to set to through. And we'll switch off this. And we'll switch off this. All right. And now what we can say is if the status equals a node, let's fix that. 
to a meta event. And meta events, they have um, certain predefined numbers um, that we can use. For example, 49 means go to a screen set. So if we fix this to 49, um, Logic knows that when this node hits, it's gonna, it's actually going to switch screen sets. If you don't know screen sets, those are these right here. So right now I'm in my range screen set. I can also go to my mix screen set. It takes a while, um, but then I see my mixer and I can see this plugin right here and everything is zoomed out and I can switch back to my arrange screen set. Um, so this we can actually put inside one of these events. So now because I switched screen sets, I think I need to open my MIDI transform window again. Yeah, that's that's the thing with screen sets. Of course, you lose your uh, you you lose your options. So we're going to create a new one again. Uh, create yes, and we'll say um, position all status equals note. We're going to listen to notes, right? Um, let's zoom in a little bit on our region again and here as well. And then we're going to fix that note to be a meta message. And then that meta message is going to have a value fix just sets a value of 49. Uh, let's type that. So this means it's going to um, switch screen sets, so we don't want to do that. And then um, the velocity, which is basically, it says velocity right now, but in this case, of course, it doesn't apply to velocity anymore. Um, what we're going to do, I'm also going to show my event list right here so that we can see that this, at the current um, current time, this is still a note, a D-sharp 2, right? Um, so now we're going to fix that to, let's switch to screen set 2 if this node plays. So now we'll hit select and operate. And you can see that the node has disappeared. It's really not there anymore, but we do see that weird sort of hashtag there in the region. And that um, that tells that this is a meta event. And we can also see that in our um, region right here. Now you have to be careful with these because these are actually logic operations. But let's see what happens if we now play this region. What should happen is if the play marker um, crosses over this meta event, it should recall a screen set, which I can imagine could be handy for a certain section of the song where you suddenly want to zoom out, for example. Let's see if that works. There we go. So this has fixed, uh, fixed the screen set and you can see that it's still going. Um, so this is a nice one, but there are a couple other ones that are very nice. Um, for example, one that I actually use, this one I don't I don't really use, it's fun, but it's, it's I mean, it's not super, uh, it's not super useful. Um, but one we can use, which is more useful, is to actually go to a certain marker. So if I um, create a new transform set here again, um, and I can call it go to marker one, for example, Yes, rename. And then we can say, all right, again, if the status equals a note, I'm, I'm just doing this to create, because it's an easy way to create a message. So we'll just have to put a note in here. And I'll we'll say, if the status equals a note, um, let it through, oh no, let, don't let it through, change it to a meta event. Um, and this time we're gonna choose the action um, 51, which is the, th these are just preset by logic to do certain things. So 51 happens to go to a marker. So I have a marker right here. If you don't have a marker, you can do marker, uh, create marker. There it is, option comma. Um, so um, if we do that, and then we'll say fix to marker one. So right now, if the play at is here, it should jump to marker one if we play over that. This can be very handy to skip a section of your song. Of course, we should select and operate that first. And I'm also going to um, remove that screen set one. OK, so let's try this. There we go. So you can see that the, um, the play had jumps to uh, another preset. You can even use this to load a project. This, and this is the stuff where you're getting a little bit in the danger zone. You can actually create, if you use um, 50 here as a meta event, um, you can actually open a specific project um, based on the uh, recent project number. Um, so this is all very cool. Now, one, one other thing I want to show you um, in relationship to this is that this transform window, it's nice to use 
it here, but it's even more powerful if you go into the MIDI environment. And actually in my MIDI environment, I'm using um, a couple of them. Um, we need to go to the click supports. No, I need to go to my own layer. So here what I'm doing, these are all transformer objects. And uh, what I'm doing basically is I have I take the sum of all my MIDI inputs. These are all my, the MIDI devices connected to my computer. They go through a monitor so that if I play them, I can see the note. And then I have this cable switcher here, which is basically a switch that either says pass everything to the sequencer, and the sequencer is just this part, there's the rest of logic, or I can convert all my notes to channel one. So this is actually a very simple transformer. Um, it just says that um, all channels fix them to channel one. So here, the transformer, we can find that um, somewhere here, transformer. It's a transformer object, and we can route things through that. Um, I actually, um, what, what you see at the bottom right here is I have some external sequencers that I use and these are um, basically envelopes, multi-segment envelopes um, that I'm using and sending into my sequencer so I can use some external automation sources and the transformers, they come in uh, very handy for that to fix things to specific channels or to change data or to scale data differently. It's, it's kind of similar as well to the um, modifier that we have here, where we can um, say that, for example, everything, <clears throat> if the input event is velocity, then we can scale that down to be 50% to sort of, um, to sort of change the total range of that. So the transformer is very handy in this uh, environment context as well. And I do have some videos for that, which you can look up as well. So I hope um, that gives you a little bit of an idea about this transform window. I'm planning to do some more videos on this, um, but I hope you found this useful so far. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.